Everyone loves a good underdog story in the K-pop world, with BTS and their humble beginnings, AOA coming back from a notable decline in popularity to prove that they are still queens, and CL breaking away from the dungeon to reclaim her throne as the bad girl of South Korea. However, there are very few cases in the K-pop world where an artist gets recognized 30 years after his debut. This is the story of how Yang jun il also known as 90s G-Dragon, became Korea's hottest star as a 50-year-old waiter working in Florida. Yang jun il was a Korean-American student at University of Southern California until his talents got noticed by a Korean music label and he was brought over to Korea to debut as a singer at age 19. <laughs> Just like that, Yang Junior started his career as an artist in the Korean music world in 1991 with the song Rebecca. The song was quite different from what the Koreans were typically hearing. His music and dance took cues from American pop music, maybe most notably Michael Jackson here. He also had very free-flowing movements, being very nonchalant and looking like not really having a strict choreography, which is quite a departure from other Korean dance artists at that time that had very synchronized and planned out movements. Visually, he was also ahead of the times. His fashion and hairstyle holds up still to this day, and you can honestly put that on right now and be called a good dresser. So to have the kind of fashion in 1991, um, man, Korea is just was not ready for him. He was just too ahead of his times. His debut and further efforts were met with mixed and mostly negative reactions. He was just too new and different from the rest of the artists at that time for the public to accept. His long hair, pretty face, and free-flowing movements were deemed just too unorderly for many of the older generations to intake. Many people thought he looked too feminine for a guy, and he even addresses it in his lyrics. And the fact that he was Korean American who heavily incorporated English lyrics in his songs made things even worse. And now at this time English was not as widely understood by Koreans as it is now and having songs where half or all of his lyrics are in English was definitely not going to connect him with the Korean audience. On top of that there was a lot of hate towards Korean Americans like him. The roots of such hate is quite difficult to pinpoint. I think the two of the main factors is Koreans viewing it as some sort of betrayal to their heritage and the jealousy of these Korean Americans living in a more developed country. It's still prevalent today and I get these Korean comments calling me a Korean American asshole all the time and I'm not even American man, I'm, I'm actually Korean. So think of how much Korea, much poorer than America, in the early 90s would have felt when a Korean American was putting out half English songs on television. To top it all off, Yang jun il actually couldn't speak Korean that well because he lived overseas most of his life and he was a Korean American. And him constantly mixing English words on air eventually led him to be banned from television in 1993. Yeah, they literally banned him because he couldn't speak Korean properly. Things were quite different back then. And do you know what's even crazier? He was refused to his visa extension because the person in charge at the immigration office didn't like Korean Americans. I'm not shitting you. Oh. 
느끼시는 거예요. 그러면서 왜 이래? <웃음> 내가 이 자리에 있는 동안 이 도장은 절대 내가 안 찍어줘. 진짜요? 너는 나 한국을 떠날 수밖에 없어 라, 라고 얘기를 하셨어요. 그래가지고 제가 부산에서 공연하러 이제 다 세팅을 하고서는 무대로 올라가려고 그랬는데 출입국 관리소에서 나온 거예요. 그래서 음, 네가 지금 이 무대에 서면 다시는 대한민국에 못 들어온다. 그래가지고 콘서트를 취소하고 다. Due to his visa troubles, him being banned from television, and just an overall lack of popularity in Korea, Yang Junyeol disappeared from the public eye in 1993. He did come back with a brief but unsuccessful stint with the group under a different name in 2001, but then hung up his boots as a singer forever. He taught English for some time after that in Korea, then eventually moved to Florida in 2015 with his family where he started working as a waiter. Fast forward five years, he's now second in Gaon social charts today after BTS, number three in brand image for male models and selling out huge fan meets. So how did Korea rediscover this forgotten singer serving tables in Florida? My mom always said life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. In 2019, some polls titled 90s G-Dragon started emerging from the Korean online communities. These posts showcase Yang Jun's sense of fashion, his music, and his stage presence, which all magically seem to be holding up great today. They compared him to G-Dragon because he and Yang jun look quite similar, and G-Dragon is also a fashion icon himself with a very nonchalant onstage attitude. People called him a genius that was born in the wrong era. On top of looking like GD and just being ahead of the times, a trend called Neutro helped this era be the right one for Yang jun -yeol. Neutro is quite a social phenomenon in at least in Korea, where millennials are discovering and consuming new things from the past, and this was in full swing in 2019. The trend sprouted from millennials wanting unique and new styles of content and products that were nothing like what they've seen before, and also probably the super miserable state of how most of them are jobless and will never be able to buy a freaking house in our lifetime, unlike the 80s. So with the neutral trend already prevalent in Korea, Yang jun seemed like the perfect mascot for it. For months, people demanded TV stations to have him on their shows. They wanted to see Yang jun back in Korea. How ironic that an artist that was ignored because he was not right for the era, then finds an era coming to call him up from his retirement. Eventually, after months of seemingly unsuccessful attempts to get Yang jun over to Korea and complete radio silence from him, he appeared on a TV show called Sugar Man on December 6th of 2019. The show stages forgotten artists of the past and Yang jun couldn't have been a better fit. He sang his debut song Rebecca and the viewers were captivated. If you see the stage, it's almost hard to believe that this guy was serving dishes at a restaurant in Florida just a week ago. He just seems so natural, so born to do this, just the way he was 30 years ago in those YouTube videos. What captivated the viewers even more was his humble and positive character. On the show, he talked about what had happened since his retirement from the limelight. He had gone through a lot of tough times, discrimination and such, but he kept his positive attitude on life and was not bitter at all. The way he talked seemed almost angelic and seemed totally unscathed by the realities of life. The Korean public had discovered a lovable, positive celebrity in a year that was just filled with bad news of public figures. Yang jun was initially planning to go back to Florida to his job after his TV appearance. However, the huge response from the Korean public led him to change his mind and pursue his music career again once more in South Korea. <laughs> Yang jun has been very busy the past two months going to music shows, holding fan meets and interviews. He says he wants to release new music soon. I'm rooting for him because regardless of if you're a fan or not of Yang jun he has truly inspired and given us a heartwarming story.
하루하루가 좀 재방송 같은 느낌이 예. 있었는데 제가 한국에 들어와 가지고는 하루가 안 끝나고 계속 가는 느낌이에요. 예. 예. 그래서 이게 꿈인가? 이게 꿈인가? 라는 얘기를 자꾸 하면서 예. 아, 그냥 감사해. 그렇습니다. 예. 예. 그럴 것 같습니다. <목소리>